The following lesson is from Certified Ethical Hacker 312-50-2008 Learn Smart Video Training. To find out how you can get unlimited access to our entire Learn Smart Video Training library, call 1-800-418-6789. Think for a moment of what you've seen in the old movies about the trackers in the West and in all parts of the world, how they would go into the woods or the desert, they would look at a footprint, and from that footprint, they could tell you everything about the animal. They could tell you that it had a limp in its left hind leg. They could tell you the kind of animal. They could tell you about how big it was. All kinds of information just from that footprint. Well, when it comes to being a certified ethical hacker, one of the things we want to do is understand how to identify as much as we can about an organization without actually touching that organization's network or systems. This is reconnaissance, or what we also call footprinting. So we want to look at the different tools and techniques that we use to gather this information about our target. The first thing to keep in mind is that footprinting is the activity that you'll perform in the reconnaissance phase. This is the activity that will lead to a map or an understanding of the target organization. Footprinting is performed by gathering as much information as you possibly can about an organization. This is going to be done before an actual attack where we're really touching the network. And it's done to develop a blueprint of the organization and to choose the best attack methods. For example, if in the footprinting phase we determine that the web server of a target organization is running internet information services, then we'll use different attack methods than we would if it were running Apache. Footprinting may consume 90% or more of the entire penetration time. So if you spend two or three weeks doing a penetration test, you may actually spend more than two weeks of that time just doing the footprinting because this is time consuming but very well worth the effort in the end. The information you'll want to include when performing the footprint would be the internet website information. So you're going to go to the organization's website if they have one and collect any information you can there. Information that may be related to their employees, the names of employees, possibly email addresses of employees and so forth. Also, any intranet access information. So if you can find out information about intranets that they run and where they're located at the website, that can be useful as well. For example, you'll visit many company websites and there will be a link that says, click here if you're a customer or visit the customer portal or something of that sort. And so you can use that to find out about intranets or extranets as well. Also, will want to know about any wireless networks that they have. We can drive up to an organization and use a passive wireless scanner to find out if they have any wireless networks and if they do, what channels they're actually operating on and what technologies they're actually using. We can do all of this without actually touching the network or making them aware that we're beginning to gather information about the organization. Remember that footprinting is one of the three phases that are considered pre-attack phases. We have footprinting, scanning, and enumeration. These three phases lead to a great picture of that organization that will help us actually launch the attacks. The question is, is there a process that we can use to go through the footprinting of an organization? And there is. There is a methodology that is defined by the EC Council that we can actually use to gather this information. The process includes first gathering any initial information that you can. You might call this the easy to find information, stuff from the website, possibly information that has been thrown away that we could gather through dumpster diving and so on. Then we want to locate the network IP range. This can be done by visiting certain websites on the internet such as Aaron and other websites that may give information about IP addresses in an organization. A little known secret here is that you can often find information about organizations networks by searching through support forums that are publicly viewable. Also we want to discover any active machines that are on the network. This is part of scanning. And then we'll find open ports or access points on the network. 
which may be part of scanning or enumeration. Then we'll detect the actual operating systems that they're using. This is sometimes known as banner grabbing. We're going to get the information about these operating systems so that we can know exactly what we're up against in our attack. Then we'll define the services that are actually on the ports that we've discovered when we've looked for open ports. And finally, with all of this information, we're going to map out the network and actually create a document that we can use as a reference during our attack. One of the important questions that a beginning ethical hacker will ask is where do I get this information to perform the footprinting of a target organization? Well, there are a lot of information sources at your disposal. Of course, you can use web searches. Google, other search engines can be used in order to find out a tremendous amount of information about individuals or organizations. Also, you can use the organization's website itself. And you don't just have to use it in its current state. You can look at the website as it is today, but you can also look at the website as it was last year or the year before or the year before that. Many times organizations put information on their websites that they do not realize is sensitive, and then later they realize that it is sensitive, so they take it down. Now they think because they've removed it from their website, it's no longer available, but we'll see how we can actually go back and get that information even though it's not at the website anymore. Job sites are one of the hidden secrets in information gathering for organizations. For example, imagine that you were targeting a particular company named a particular company incorporated. You could go to job sites like monster.com, dice.com and others and just do a search for a particular company incorporated and that's going to show you any jobs that they have posted. Now narrow that down to the technical jobs, the IT jobs. What kind of information are you going to find there? Well, you're going to find information about the systems that they're using or planning to use, aren't you? Because they're going to list requirements for the job for this technical employee. So if they say you need to understand Cisco routers, then you can count on it. That organization is probably using Cisco routers. If they say that you need to understand Windows servers and Red Hat Linux, then it probably means they're using both Windows servers and Red Hat Linux. So job sites can reveal a lot of useful information for the ethical hacker. Additionally, news sites and press releases can be important. Some smaller organizations make the mistake of making it a big issue when they upgrade their networks. I've actually seen small organizations release press releases saying that they've upgraded their network infrastructure to better serve their clients. They think this is a way of getting news, and of course it might be a way of getting some news coverage, but the reality is it also reveals that information about their network, and so it may not be the best thing to do. But news sites and press releases can also reveal information about larger organizations, such as new partnerships that they're taking on with other organizations and possibly any type of sensitive large projects that they're involved in that they must release because of being a publicly traded organization. We can also try to look for private websites that an organization may be running. For example, we can just try to go to private.organizationalwebsiteurl.com or members.organizationalwebsiteurl.com or customers or others as well. In other words, we just take their normal website and we put in front of it different words in order to find out if they're actually running these different websites they may not even have them password protected. They may just assume that since there's no link to them from their main website, no one would ever try to go to those. But remember the cardinal rule of the hacking world. Hackers do things you don't expect them to do. The next thing we need to do is locate the network range. What are the IP address ranges that are assigned to the organization? We can actually use Aaron to do this. When we do a who is lookup, at the ARIN.net website, we're going to get a result similar to this. Here we see, for example, the Microsoft Global Network spans from 207.46.0.0 to 207.46.255.255. So just as quickly as that, we've located at least one of the network blocks that is used by Microsoft. The next step is to